Do you always get confused when you see a bunch of abbreviations in a written crochet pattern for an amigurumi doll? So come with me in this video because today I'll guide you through this journey with some simple techniques that will make you understand any written crochet pattern. I am Bianca from Crochetnix and in today's video I have this very special tutorial on how to read a crochet pattern and I'll break it into a few steps to make it even clearer for you. Usually when we are beginners we only rely on YouTube channels with big tutorials so we can follow along the crochet pattern but after a while we gain more experience and we want to explore some other patterns, some other dolls that usually are paid patterns and written instructions. And we have to agree in this one, there are amazing patterns and beautiful ones out there. So yeah, it's important for us to know how to read them properly and explore these amazing patterns that exist. So before we dive into the explanation, it's very important to say that every designer has its own way of writing and explaining things in their written pattern. So it changes a bit from person to person, I mean their experiences or cultural background. So it doesn't mean that the way that I will show you here will be exactly the same way that you will see in all written instructions. But all in all, you see that these steps are useful for any amigurumi pattern and you will understand them. I am 100% sure that after this tutorial, you will understand them all. So for this tutorial here, I will use my Luma Lee pattern, which is free and you can download it here. It's a very beautiful pattern. Um, Luma Lee is from the Super Mario movie I created because I really think this character was so funny. I was laughing so hard with the kids at the movies. So yeah, that's why I created and we will follow along the explanation with this pattern. So usually the first few pages of a crochet pattern consists of the material list. So it usually consists of all the yarns that are used in the project, the crochet hook size um, that was used for this yarn, um, if the pattern requests, I don't know, amigurumi glasses, wire, hot glue, or any kind of glue, I don't know, embroidery yarn, what else can we use? Yeah. I mean, the, the variety of accessories that we can use in a pattern are huge and we usually write in these first pages. There is also a list of abbreviations, which are short terms that are used throughout the pattern and also some other instructions that the designer think that might be useful for this specific pattern or for all the patterns that this designer creates. Usually when someone takes a crochet pattern, um, they simply want to start making like, okay, which yarn do I need? Which crochet hook size do I need? Let's get crocheting. But this is not how you should do it. I know lots of people who simply ignore these first few pages because they are like, they say, I'm an advanced crocheter. I don't need to check these first tips or these first few pages. I want to crochet and I'm a know-it-all. Don't do that please it doesn't matter if you're a beginner intermediate or advanced level crocheter there is something important in the first few pages for you to read so read it so actually this is my advice number one skim all pages before crocheting it are there any extra tips are there youtube links or qr codes with simple tutorials that might be helpful throughout the pattern what is the order that the amigurumi is written let's suppose it's a doll do we make body first or head first i'm not saying that you have to read everything word by word you just skim skim all the pages to see if there's any important information there and you were missing this idea of skimming all the pages first is just for you to get the gist of what is the pattern about or what is that you're going to build like 
okay, I know it's a doll because I purchased the pattern for a doll, but how is the doll created? What's the idea behind it? It's really important to skim all the pages first. And I say it because as a designer, there is always a reason why things are written the way they are. And you should really follow these steps and these explanations. Think that the person who wrote it have already thought about all the steps that you are going to create. This person has already tested the pattern a couple of times before selling it. So there's a reason why it's, I don't know, you should make the arms first and then the legs. And I don't know, the head is the last part of the crochet pattern. There's a reason and the designer knows that. And that's why it was written the way it was. Which also leads me to advice number two. Follow the pattern in the sequence that it is written. And I'm not saying it just because, I don't know, it was an idea that came up to me. I'm saying it because I have a few years of experience in this area and I have seen so many of students and customers asking me some things simply because they didn't follow exactly the way that it was written or the order that I wrote. They decided to do their own order and it changes. Oh no, I'm a crochet designer, but I'm also a teacher and I am specialized in methodology of teaching. Um, I am now actually doing my master's degree in teaching also. So you see that I love this subject. Teaching is really in my blood. But um, as a designer, as a crochet designer, I always think the best way to write something. I think in a way to write it, to make the pattern be as didactic as possible. So sometimes it's written in a way because I spent quite a long time thinking about it and all the methodology behind it and a person changes it and then the result is not the way they expected and there's not much to do in that case. Okay, so just take your crochet pattern, follow it, read it, skim it, and enjoy the process of creating because following a crochet pattern and you see your beautiful amigurumi doll or animal, anything you want to create, getting its shape is amazing. It's amazing to see it happening. Now to the pattern itself and we will check the abbreviations first. I know that all these letters mix up may seem a bit intimidating, but believe me because these are not that difficult and learning these abbreviations are the key to understand a written pattern. So here we have the list for abbreviations. We have CH, which means chain, R and D for round, ST for stitch, SLST for slip stitch, SC single crochet, and we have half double crochet, front loops only, back loops only, increase, decrease, double crochet, treble crochet, back post single crochet. And when we have those um, three dots here, it means like, round stitch is total so if you have like in parentheses um 30 or 42 it means the total stitches in that round honestly guys you don't have to memorize this list of abbreviations at first you you get used to them after i don't know two three patterns you get used to it and you don't even have to go back to the abbreviation list so now that we have the abbreviations in mind you see that it becomes much, much easier to understand a crochet pattern. So let's check the pattern for our beautiful Lumali. Here, we start with the legs. And I wrote here, make two pieces with Neptune color. This color is written in the material list in the previous page. So what you have to do, RND1 means the first round. So round number one, you have to do six single crochets in a magic ring. Round number two, you make six increases. So remember that you have 12 single crochets in total. This part here is the amount of stitches that you have in the round. Round three, you have to make three single crochets, one increase. The sequence between parentheses, you have to do them 
three times, which totals 15 stitches. And then in round number four, you make 15 single crochets. And this is how you read a crochet pattern. Another thing that I want to show you again in my Lumali crochet pattern is something that I usually make and I have seen that some designers also make it. There are some people who don't do that and that's totally fine because after a while it gets intuitive what each round is supposed to be. But if you are in doubt, if you're not sure what, um, how to read this person's pattern, you can always ask. But in my case, let me show you something. Also in the first pages with instructions that I told you before, you can see that I have here the list of abbreviations, dimensions, difficulty level, and also a small example on how to read the pattern. So in this example here, we have round three, two single crochets, one increase. You make all these sequence six times and you end up with 24 stitches. Remember that one increase means two single crochets. So two single crochets plus two single crochets, which are the increases, six times, four, six times, you have 24 stitches. And always use stitch markers when you are crocheting each round. I personally like to put the stitch marker in the first stitch of the round. There are some people who prefer to put in the last. It's okay, it's up to you which place you're going to, to put the stitch marker. The important thing here is to keep track where you are in the pattern because otherwise you will get lost. I know I may sound like a broken record because I always say how important using stitch markers is, but yeah, what can I do? It is really important. And lastly, pay attention to the stitch count. It's very important to count the stitches at the end of each round so you know you're doing it correctly. You cannot imagine how frustrating it can be when you're like following a sequence, like you have to make, I don't know, 50 stitches for 10 rounds. And when you got to the last one, you see that you don't have 50, you have, I don't know, 51 and you, oh my God, when did I mess it up? And you have to go back like 10 rounds. It's awful. So every time you end a um, round, especially if you're a beginner, do that, please. Count the stitches to see if you have the correct amount of stitches that you are supposed to have in this round. So you will follow the pattern and like follow all the sequence that is written. And usually in the last few pages, the last page of the pattern is the assemble part. There are some patterns that do not require an assemble because you do that gradually throughout the pattern but sometimes the pattern requires you to do that. And this is usually in the last few pages where you have to assemble, I don't know, the arms, the ears of the doll, or the legs, I don't know, or just embroider the face of the Amigurumi. And that's it. These are the steps and some tips <laughs> mixed in these steps that will help you read a crochet pattern. And that's it, guys. Read it carefully, skim all the pages, read the instructions and follow the pattern. And I don't know, check the tutorials, YouTube videos, um, if there are QR codes in the pattern, follow it. And I am sure you are going to have a perfect finished doll. And there you have it, a simple guide with a few tips that will make you understand how to read a written crochet pattern. And always remember, practice makes perfect. Don't feel discouraged. If in the beginning you feel like it's too difficult and it takes too long for you to read a simple hat pattern, I don't know. Because with time and patience, you will be able to create beautiful amigurumis on your own. Thank you for watching. Let's keep these crochet hooks busy. And I'll leave you with this other video here because I am pretty sure you're going to like it too.